Why I quit Etihad Airways? Hi, I am Rosie. I am ex Qatar Airways cabin crew and ex Etihad Airways cabin crew. And in this episode, I'm finally sharing the story with the reasons why I left Etihad Airways. For the ones who are interested, you can watch the other episode where I shared why I left Qatar Airways. Just a little disclaimer here, the reasons why I left Qatar Airways are very different than the reasons why I left Etihad Airways. Yes, Qatar Airways, the fact that I left was strongly connected with the pandemic situation where I really had no choice and I had to leave, but I didn't want to come back because of other reasons that you might find uh, in the other episode. But shortly after this happened, I joined Etihad Airways. It was still during pandemic, kind of, with the, when Etihad Airways finally started recruiting. I was, I think, one of the first few recruitments. And I was called very fast to Abu Dhabi to start a training as they needed people and i must say that i had a pretty awesome experience working for etihad from the very first day from the moment i arrived the training was great it was so much fun i mean comparing with qatar airways it was so much more relaxed and fun and easy i remember even my first flight to abu dhabi they uh, managed to upgrade me in business class. I was lucky, so I had a very good welcoming. When I arrived to my accommodation, my flatmate was waiting for me. I've met her. She is amazing. We still keep in touch. And um, we had a spark from the very first moment when I arrived. I was so happy to feel like home so easy and in such a short time like the next day i was already comfortable with everything around me i loved the accommodation where i was living i loved the gym my friends were my neighbors also my accommodation was close to the training academy and to the airport which was perfect i easily made friends from the very first day and i started flying flying was fun i well, I, I used to get my requested flights many times I had long layovers. When I say long layovers, I mean 48 hours <laughs> or 72 hours. That's a long layover when you work for the Middle East. But somehow I got a few of those quite on a regular basis. In my days off, if I was bored, I just used to go to Dubai because it was a 40 minutes drive by car from Abu Dhabi where I lived to Dubai. Basically, I was living my life. What else will a girl who's 24 years old will do, right? So, still, why have I left? There are a few reasons and these kind of reasons uh, are not only my reasons. When you join these amazing airlines, you don't really understand why people are leaving because there are people leaving all the time. But once you stay there, you get to understand that <laughs> that life, maybe it's not that glamorous as you initially thought. <laughs> you might realize after a while that there are more important things in life and uh, you start prioritizing differently. I must say, it was the best experience of my life to be a cabin crew in the Middle East in my early 20s. I regret nothing. It gave me so many opportunities overall. But it came a time when I started to see things differently. I will start with number one, flying schedule. Yes, flying is fun, but after a few years, you really start to feel those nights when you didn't sleep. You start to feel tired, you, you get purple eye bags. <laughs> you start to feel a bit of a back pain, then tomorrow it's more back pain. Maybe you get bowel trauma 
the pain, the severe pain in your ears from time to time. You might get sick a lot because your immune system is uh, low. So health-wise, I would say that's one of the most important reasons why people might give up on this job after a few years because it really starts to affect you on a daily basis. I have to share this. My last few months flying there, I'm not saying it, it was something wrong with Etihad uh, scheduling because they respect the legalities and the hours and the rest timings but after a few years of flying your body is so messed up that even though let's say you have a day off you need to stay in bed and recover so in my last few months i was so tired I reached a point where I needed to go to get an IV drip every two weeks. So I actually had a membership. There was this app in Abu Dhabi, which uh, they provide uh, home medical services. Of course, I paid for it. Insurance doesn't cover it. But they basically come to your home. They, you can choose an IV drip. You can choose like the vitamins that they put in and they just... <laughs> put inside your veins an IV drip and I used to do it on a I, I used to do it so often because I felt like if I don't get one of those I'm gonna collapse. Also I had COVID like three times in a year which come on every time was like getting worse and worse and worse when you interact with the passengers so close of course you are open to you know, catching flus or other bacteria or whatever. So I'm not gonna go deeper than that on uh, the health subject. Let's go to the next reason. Let's go to reason number two. Reason number two, I like to call it the bubble. The truth is that, yes, Middle Eastern companies are amazing and they give you amazing opportunities. But at some point you realize that you're in a bubble. You are like in a golden cage because it becomes a really a comfort zone where you don't have to think about bills, you don't think about taxes, you don't think about basically adult things because everything is covered. You just do your job and you go back to your accommodation and company takes care of everything. This is great, right? But I'd say you are in your early 20s. This is great. But then as you reach your 30s, there is a click there that you realize that, I, at least in my case, I realized that you cannot grow very much more like financially or career-wise. Yes, you can get upgraded to business class, to first class, you can become a cabin senior, a cabin service, service director or a cabin manager, whatever you call it, purser. But you are kind of still doing the same job in reality. It's just that your responsibilities are bigger and your salary is slightly increasing. But let's say you become a purser, which is like the top as a salary. The salary is still not a huge difference and that's it that you cannot grow more than that maybe a few people they get to work in the office they get to work in uh, hr department to recruit cabin crew later which is great maybe if you want to do to do that kind of stuff to become from a cabin crew to get a different position but still in the airline yes you do have these possibilities and these opportunities after some years and especially if you are with your family there i think it's great but otherwise if you're just alone there it's not much happening and at some point you feel like you're in this comfort zone when you, you want to get out but you don't know how because you don't know how to do something else actually and, it, and it's becoming frustrating. I don't know how to say it. It's very hard for people who don't fly to understand but I think that if you are a cabin crew in the Middle East, you understand what I say. Please comment down below if you 
have a better explanation, a better way to explain to the others. Basically, I feel like I'm stuck and my job is so repetitive, so repetitive and the time goes so fast. I have to warn you here, once you start flying, the time is different. A year will feel like three months and I'm not kidding. It's gonna go so, so, so fast that it's incredible. You don't know when you turn 30. So you have to kind of take care of your personal life too and your growth career and other things. This bubble feeling was becoming frustrating for me. Then I'm gonna go to the third reason, which is the main reason maybe. My personal life and what I really want to do and how I've seen my life. Well, personal life, what does it mean? It means family, right? <laughs> well, I must share this, that while I was um, in Etihad, I had a long distance relationship. My uh, boyfriend lives in Zurich. So basically I would do these turnarounds all the time coming from Abu Dhabi to Zurich three, four times in a month. I would request for a layover or in my days off, I will take a flight and come here. And this, it was becoming just very tiring and draining. And I, I feel like I have two different lives. Like, yes, I had my friends in Abu Dhabi and flying was fine, but I wanted to have the home feeling and to be home with my boyfriend, maybe having a dinner at home and a chill night. And I was trying to do these two things at the same time. And I was always under pressure. I feel like I don't know where I belong. So I had to take a decision at some point. And yes, obviously I have chosen my uh, personal life and I decided to focus on my relationship and on my future as a family, as a career, as a, as a place to live. I must say that despite the fact that everyone is crazy about Dubai, Abu Dhabi and the Middle East, I am a big fan of Europe. That's a personal choice. I missed Europe so much, so much. I miss the nature, I miss the rain, I miss the, the snow. <laughs> I, I had this nostalgic feeling all the time when I was in the Middle East, like I had in the summer especially when I was locked between the walls with the AC on all the time, I felt like I, I'm in some kind of prison at some point. I was just lonely sitting in my room waiting for my flight. As this job can uh, give you some moments of loneliness from time to time. And you might miss your family, you might miss your friends, you might be thinking that maybe you want to start a family at some point. So you have to do things in that direction. It was not easy at all to leave Etihad. Maybe one of the hardest decisions I've ever made. And sometimes I do miss that life. And I always say to people, yes, I do recommend this job there for a while, then do whatever you have to do. <laughs> so yes, I took that decision. I left, I did it so fast. Like I, I kind of did it almost from the impulse. I knew that if I'm not doing it now, I'm never gonna leave. So I just, you know, I was not ready, but you are never ready. I was like, okay, I'm gonna be gone. I am gonna be gone. I don't know. I don't care what's my financial situation. I don't care what the future is gonna bring. I'm just gonna do it. I must say, I think I was even depressed like two, three months after I left. I was in a continuous pressure because I didn't know if I'm doing the right thing or not. But in life, always listen to your instinct. And I listened to my instinct. And uh, things, they uh, got better in time. I moved with my boyfriend. Our relationship is working better than ever, which 
if you think about it, this is one of the most important things in life, right? Friends, family, partner. So these things make you happy on a daily basis. Also, I found a job here in Zurich. I am still working in the aviation industry and I still love it. I am working for a very small airline. I am mainly doing turnarounds, so basically I'm not traveling that much anymore. I'm mostly at home, which I love. And I must say something here, a little gossip about uh, where I work right now. There are many people, many of my colleagues here in Zurich that are coming from Emirates, from Qatar, from Etihad, because they had exactly the same feeling like I had. I just wanted a bit of a different vibe, of a more, let's say, chilled environment, more nature, uh, more freedom, I mean the feeling of freedom, <laughs> and um, that's why they also made this move. And I talked to my colleagues and um, all of them said that it wasn't really easy to leave these top companies and take this decision. And this brings me to reason number four, because now I can compare. I started with Qatar Airways, which is a tough airline, and we work like crazy there. And then I went to Etihad Airways, which is another top airline, and the standards are high. Now that I work for a European airline in Switzerland, oh my god, the job is so easy! <laughs> like. I cannot compare it. The work is less and uh, I don't know, it's just so much easier. Everything is so much easier than there comparing. And yes, the airline, it's a small airline that not many people heard of for sure. We only have uh, four, four airplanes at the moment. But I love going to work every day and it's so much fun to meet my colleagues. We are a small company, so we know each other. We have the same destinations every day. So yes, it's totally different uh, benefits. We don't travel that much. We don't get accommodation for free. We do not get transport, insurance. No, I'm in Switzerland, so I have to pay myself all of this but the job is definitely easier and now that i'm here i realized how hard we work in the middle east <laughs> like in the middle east not being funny the workload is uh, incredible you work it's not a fancy job where you just go with your lipstick and smile at everybody no you work you work like a man sometimes <laughs> Like really, those containers are heavy. Those cards are like 75 kgs. Passengers are very demanding because they have high expectations. So when you go to the Middle East, yes, you get the nice benefits, but also be ready to work. And again, when you are young, you can handle it better. Okay, I'm still young, but still, I feel like I don't have that patience already anymore. I don't have that excitement anymore. It's gone. So yeah, that would be another reason why people leave. Because in my program in uh, Cabin Crew to be Academy, I always tell my students, guys, at the interview, tell them how much you love working with people. Impress them with your customer service skills. Yes, you need this because you really need to love working with a large amount of people, which um, if you are an introvert or you don't like to do what others say, this job is not for you because there you always have to give energy to the people which is nice i've met amazing passengers i have made i have very nice memories from my flights but in the same time it's so energy consuming and i feel like i couldn't do it for for forever <laughs> So I really, really admire my cabin crew who are still there and still have this positive energy. Now I will take a moment, as I mentioned about my uh, cabin crew to be academy. This is a personal project. It's an online platform where I put all of my energy. I think I put a piece of my soul in it in order to 
help other people to become cabin crew for the Middle Eastern Airlines like Emirates, Qatar Airways, Etihad Airways and others. I'm teaching there everything I know and everything I experience about the life as a cabin crew in the Middle East, about how to get a job, how to prepare. I put myself in this position of a personal coach. And uh, if you're interested, maybe see you there. The link is down in this description. Just a briefly presentation. We have there more than 10 hours of video materials, written materials, study materials like PDFs where you can practice for the interview, ebooks where you can find all the interview questions and answers, of course. We have special guests who worked for these top airlines for more than 10 years. And we also have a big community that you can join. You will get access to once you register into the program. And also we have live webinars from time to time. I am super happy that uh, this project actually gives people jobs and, and I must say that this is my biggest achievement so far knowing that I spent my best years doing this and I can pass further this knowledge so other people can uh, experience this travel, this adventurous life, this even luxury life so other people can have this experience too. Conclusion do I regret it? I don't regret it because nothing lasts in life. And living in the past, I don't want to do it. I just want to embrace every new chapter of my life. I believe that it was just time for me to go. It wasn't easy, but now I'm really enjoying the new chapter of my life that I am currently in and my new life here. If I'm gonna stay in this position forever? No, probably there is another chapter and another chapter. But definitely in my life, this chapter of being a cabin crew in the Middle East was one of the best decisions I've ever made. The memories, the people I've met, the possibilities and opportunities that I had, the fact that I am here today in Zurich with my boyfriend working for this uh, nice airline, it's also a result of the opportunities that came because I started with Qatar Airways and with Etihad Airways. That was all for today. <laughs> I hope that my story maybe inspired you or maybe gave you some information and see you next time.